This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, today I'll be talking about the snare. So I'll be sharing my learning experience with the snare which is used for bisecting the nucleus in manual SICS. At the outset, I must congratulate Dr. Anil Shah from Maharashtra, India for designing this wonderful tool many years back. I was fascinated by it and I decided to try it out for myself. I am well versed with the manual SICS which I have been doing since years and my technique has been typically the FACO sandwich technique for nucleus management. In this video, I will be sharing my experiences with my first 5 cases of using the snare. I will share some of my first few errors which should help in shortening the learning curve of other surgeons who would be wanting to use this device. I did not have any prior experience with this device. I just got this uh, device just a few days back. My orientation for this technique of snare was just that I have seen few videos of Dr. Anil Shah performing the surgery. Let's see how things fare now. This is the first case, an intumescent cataract. The rexus is done. The nucleus is prolapsed by manually into the antechamber. Ovid is placed behind and in front of the nucleus to create space and to minimize trauma to the endothelium. The snare is introduced slowly in a horizontal plane. And then I'm flipping it in a vertical plane to encompass the nucleus. And then I'm pulling at it slowly. Okay, now I have got the crack. Wow. The ovid is injected in this crack, so a nice bisection of the nucleus is achieved. Well, I thought it was easy. But I noticed there was some mild shallowing of the antechamber uh, during the maneuver. And I was worried about the uh, cornea on the next post-op day. The two fragments are then removed using the vectis and the dialer and the case was completed. Well, the results of the test are really on the next day when we see the cornea and I was anxious for the result. The cornea was smiling, the patient was happy, so was I, so all good. Now let's go on to the second case. The tunnel is created, rexus is done, nucleus is maneuvered by manually out of the bag. Ovid is placed in front and behind the nucleus. And now is the time to snare. I am finding it difficult to introduce the snare. The lateral edge of the tunnel is restricting it. I just enlarge it a little bit. Again I am introducing the snare below the nucleus obliquely and then it's flipped over so that the loops of the snare rope in over the nucleus encompassing it and then the snare is pulled which divides the nucleus into two halves. These halves are separated by pushing OVD into it and then each of these pieces are removed. Then the lens is placed into the bag. My third case. This was a bulky lens. I am anxious whether I will be able to hook this large nucleus without damaging the cornea. Now because of the bulky nucleus, I have made the loop of the snare very large, which is making it difficult for me to maneuver inside the chamber. Anyway, with the second attempt, I could rope it in and then the nucleus bisection could be completed effortlessly.
So let me critically analyze these three cases and try to understand how I could improve. Number one, the most common issue which I noticed in all the three cases was when it's trying to pull the string to divide the nucleus, the nucleus is also being pulled towards the wound. This should not happen because when the nucleus comes into the peripheral part of the antechamber, it is likely to rub against the endothelium because of the lack of space in the peripheral antechamber. Number two, secondly, while I'm introducing the snare and gripping the nucleus, I was probably putting much stress on the wound, resulting in these corneal folds, which are suggestive of shallowing of antechamber, and this needs to be avoided. Number three, while introducing the snare, I was not regulating the dimension or size of the loop. I was entering the antechamber with a wide loop, which was causing difficulty in introducing it. And the large loop can also cause mechanical damage to the endothelium and also the underlying iris. Although I noticed these shortcomings, the outcomes in each of these cases was just fine. There was no major issue as such because the post-op appearance of the corneas did not reveal any evidence of mechanical trauma. But I definitely thought there was plenty of scope for improvement. So now with this understanding, I planned my next two cases. I essentially understood two important things here. Number one, the act of snaring is essentially a bimanual maneuver. My left non-dominant hand holding the hub has to be still while the right hand pulls the string which is going to bisect the nucleus. What the error which was happening was, I was unintentionally pulling the a non-dominant hand which was resulting in the nucleus being pulled towards the wound. So with this understanding now, let us see how things will fare. So this is the case number four. Uh, this is a case of a phacomorphic glaucoma with lots of inflammation. The rexus is done. Nucleus is mobilized into the antechamber. While introducing the loop, I have consciously reduced the diameter slightly so that it can get in easily. Now the loop diameter is increased so that it can easily go and hook the nucleus. So this is done when we are trying to flip it. And once it is roped in the nucleus, the string is pulled, resulting in complete cracking of the nucleus. So let us rewind and see. During these maneuvers, point to note here is that the cornea was less distorted during the maneuver, the chamber is well formed throughout, and more importantly, the nucleus was not pulled towards the wound. It was still in the central part of the chamber. Now moving on to the last case. Again, this is a case of a lens-induced phacolytic glaucoma. The rexus is done. Nucleus is maneuvered out of the bag. I am putting OVD behind the nucleus. During this maneuver, I nudge it towards my right side just a little bit. This would give me more space to maneuver the snare from one side so that the hooking of the nucleus is much more easier. The snare is then introduced, the size of the loop is regulated, its width is less while introducing into the antechamber and then increased just a bit to hook the nucleus. Then the string is pulled resulting in complete bisection of the nucleus. The each of these pieces is then gently removed out. So this was my brief overview of my initial experiences with this wonderful device. To summarize, there are few small tricks to shorten the learning curve. Number one, I would introduce the snare into the antechamber with a smaller loop and then increase it appropriately so that it hooks the nucleus without touching the Call endothelium. Number two, 
nudging the nucleus slightly to one side, typically to my right, would make it easier to hook the nucleus from the left side. Keeping my left hand, that is a non-dominant hand, steady and still, while the right hand is pulling the string, is critical in preventing the nucleus from being displaced towards the wound. And lastly, the most important secret, using a cohesive OVD during the procedure, like sodium hyaluronate, would ease the learning curve significantly since the chamber is maintained much better and the damage to the corneal endothelium is minimized significantly. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.